Steve Mould is in friendly contest with Mehdi from Electro Boom on what causes such great heights of the loop in a ball chain Holy fountain. Cow. But more importantly, they have a bet of 10,000 pennies to explain what mechanism actually causes the chain to fountain in the first place. Mehdi for sure helps to debunk the kicking motion known as the mold effect. However, I am not satisfied with his claim of what makes the chain move upward. A time period is needed here in which the chain curves up, allowing for the vertical speed to rise gradually. So you see, the chain must curve up above the surface to allow for the gradual change of speed. I realized that you can make a 10 minute science video, have the claim take two sentences, and what comes before and after could all be just smoke and mirrors. Won't you honest from the start? Hold my beer, cause well, my claim might be no different. I claim the ball chain fountain is a perpetual whip where a small mass of about 10 stationary links in the container are being accelerated or whipped to a higher velocity because of the impact of elastic collisions from the larger mass of chain in motion. Sentence 2. Since the whipped or impacted end is continually feeding more chain from the container, the faster chain speed is transferred to angular kinetic energy observed as spiral formations, which at times will momentarily release angular motion to bursts of linear chain speed, causing the loop to grow in height. My actual claim only requires the inertial impact force of elastic Whoa. collisions by the heavier links Man. pulling upward on the lighter links that rest in the container. So a bolder claim can be made. This effect still can occur in a chain that is being pulled straight up out of the container. Therefore no loop is necessary. The effect still happens. It will be just subdued and more snake-like side to side. But being pulled at fast enough speeds unique shapes might form, and if enough bursts of linear speed can be whipped from the stationary links, a cubic loop possibly could propagate or be induced. To support this claim I look to what is known. It is known that the last bit of chain or rope leaving the container wants to whip higher than the loop. Thus a higher velocity potential always exists even if the weight of the chain still in the container impedes a true whip-like motion. To support my bold claim, look at the chain being pulled straight up off the table. The last bit of chain leaving the table also whips higher. The tail goes noticeably higher than the leading links being pulled. Observations that support my claim show a marked link surging forward and slowing down around the loop as many as eight to nine times. This observation points towards the elastic impacts and collisions of the links being whipped at quick periodic intervals from the container. I would state that the perpetual whip will always occur except at slow speeds where friction losses dominate and the chain truly moves at constant velocity. In that case, there would be no mold effect to observe. This observation shows helical spirals of chain form, then straighten out. Every time the loop is pulling a new line off the floor, helical spirals form, then straighten out resulting in higher loop height. These spirals are already up to full speed and have the same linear chain speed of the loop, but have additional energy stored as angular kinetic energy. Simply put, when a spiral straightens out, a greater loop height is expected. This truly demonstrates the transfer of energy from angular kinetic to a momentary increase in linear or vertical chain speed, adding sustained greater loop height at that moment, even if the average velocity of chain in the system remains the same.
I get how a heavy basketball can collide with a light tennis ball and make the tennis ball go much faster. But can a link at rest in the container be impacted and go much faster? Isn't this train car being jerked forward at a higher velocity, then crashes into the section of train that's pulling it? You see the joint in full tension, then slack, then tension again. In a chain fountain, the link being shock loaded to higher speed will then shock load the next stationary link in the container, normalizing the increase in speed. This heavy bearing, like the long heavy chain falling to the ground, in fact can shock load this lighter bearing to a momentary burst of higher speed, shown as the cord going slack, forming an S shape. So what makes ball chain work so well? Well, the chain is connected by solid rods, making each link comparable to a slide hammer, also making links capable of collisions when slack or compressing against each other. I can push five links together with ease. That's not happening with regular chain. But why does macaroni on a string work so well too? Fast chain speed from aerodynamics, the same compressive collisions from tightly strung macaroni. Well, for this video, I leave it there, and looking forward to newer designs and higher fountains. Thanks, and a lot of credit to YouTube Science. I now realize how much effort it takes to make quality content. If someone asked me who my favorite teacher is, I would definitely point to this platform for my answer. Thanks again.